for documents related to President Trump's firing of FBI Director James Comey and Attorney General Jeff Sessions' decision to recuse himself from the Russia investigation earlier this year. Fox News is also learning that Mueller's team is scheduled to interview more senior White House officials in the coming weeks, including White House Communications Director Hope Hicks, White House Counsel Doug McGahn, and Josh Raffel, a close aide to the White House senior advisor Jared Kushner. Alan Dershowitz is a Harvard professor emeritus and a lifelong Democrat, and you wrote the book on all of this, on this investigation, Trumped Up. Yeah. What's your take on this latest development? Well, I think it's very worrying. I think it shows that Mueller is going well beyond his authority as a, a prosecutor and is trying to make a case that the president might have engaged in obstruction of justice by engaging in constitutionally protected act. The president is entitled to fire the head of the FBI. The president's entitled to direct his attorney general who to investigate, who not to. That's what the law has been since Thomas Jefferson directed his attorney general to go after Aaron Burr. If we want to change it, we should change it by legislation or constitutional amendment. But you can't change the law by having a prosecutor make a crime out of something that's a constitutionally protected act. But it doesn't matter what his motivation was. I mean, it seems like that's what they're seeking with the emails and the communications between the team within each other. They're do looking for really, the motivation. Do we really want to psychoanalyze every president's motivations? Uh, how many of the motivations are political? How many of them are opportunistic? You know, you vote for a president. We're entitled as citizens to look into the president's mind and speculate and say he was badly motivated. I don't see that the prosecutor should have a right to turn a constitutionally protected act of the president into a crime by speculating about what his motive might have been. So this originally was supposed to be about investigating Russian meddling into the election, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. I mean, and it seems like the group can go as far afield as that as they want, the investigative team. Does that include when you hear the president's son saying, what about Uranium One? What about the deals that Hillary Clinton made with Russia in the run-up to the election as well? Isn't that meddling with the election? Look, I took the position right from the beginning. There should be no special counsel appointed to investigate Trump or Hillary Clinton. These are political sins, if they are sins at all. They are not crimes, and we shouldn't do tit-for-tat. We shouldn't say, oh, they're investigating Trump, therefore they should investigate Clinton, we should stop investigating both. We should appoint a bipartisan national commission to look into Russian influence on American elections in order to prevent them from happening in the future. Special counsel is the worst way of going after these problems. What if the original allegations about the Clinton Foundation are true? This idea that they accepted $145 million during the time when this decision about Uranium One was sitting before a committee of which she was a part. She didn't have sole control but she certainly was enriched quite a lot by people who had business in front of the State Department. Does that fall anywhere in there? I don't think so. I think that's much like the Bob Menendez case, uh, where they never could connect the what he received, uh, plane rides, and what he did. Uh, presidents and secretaries of state and others do things for a multiplicity of reasons. The Clinton Foundation got funds for a multiplicity of reasons. Making that connection in a criminal context is dangerous to the civil liberties of all Americans. Well, it seems like you'd never be able to do it unless you had an email that said, you know, please sign on the dotted line, I'm giving you this $145 million and I expect in return that you're going to approve this deal. Short of that, mm -hmm. how do you make a case like this stick? Well, for example, the Israeli government has a statute that's called cast your bread upon the waters. It makes it a crime to give anything of value to somebody who is in a position to help you. The United States law isn't that. It, quid pro quo. Mm -hmm. It has to be, I'm giving you this, and in return, you're giving me that. That's what the legislature decided. We have to apply current law, not what we hope the law should be. I'm going to take you back to the original question about the Mueller investigation. Where does it go next? What do you think is going to happen? Oh, he's going to do the domino game. He's going to try to find low-hanging fruit, anybody close to Trump, who he can indict for jaywalking or you name it, uh, failing to complete a form. He's going to then squeeze them to try to make them sing. The problem is some of these people, when they're squeezed, they not only sing, they compose. Mm -hmm. That is, they make up stories, they exaggerate, because they know the better the evidence, the sweeter the deal. It's a very dangerous tactic, and it's used by both sides against yeah. their political enemies. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Alan Dershowitz. Thanks for being